is thy feet. Have you ever heard the phrase, curiosity killed the cat? This phrase is often used as a warning. Being too curious might just lead to danger, harm, or even catastrophe. But fortunately, that was not the case for the curious man in our text for today. And in our message today titled, A Model for Salvation, we will see how instead of one man's curiosity leading to disaster, that it led to something so wonderful that it was completely out of this world. But before we move on to our text, please bow with me in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we come to you today in the holy and in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask you to be with me today as I expound upon this scripture passage in Luke chapter 19. And I pray that at the conclusion of this message, that we will have a better understanding of the salvation of Jesus Christ. It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. The scripture for today's message is found in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. And the word of the Lord reads on this wise. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste, came down, and received him joyfully. Amen. A model for salvation. Now, being inquisitive can lead to potentially painful and unpleasant outcome, especially when your curiosity is fueled by just plain nosiness in order to get information to use against someone. But there's also an upside to being inquisitive, which generally happens when the motivation for your curiosity is love. And a desire to gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from the word of God on salvation, God the Father, Jesus his Son, the Holy Spirit, or other faith based information is also positive curiosity. And our text today gives an example of the positive outcome for a man who was curious about Jesus. And we will discuss his story in three outlines, which are first, seek Jesus. Second, seen by Jesus. Third, receive Jesus. Verse 1 of our text. Today we have Jesus entering and passing through Jericho and route up to Jerusalem. Now, Jericho is approximately 17 miles from Jerusalem. The route from Jericho to Jerusalem was very dangerous and difficult. It was infested with robbers and all sorts of shady characters. It was also the place where the story about the Good Samaritan took place. You know the story about the Jewish man who almost lost his life on that road when the robbers got a hold to him, beat him down, and left him for dead. But the good Samaritan came and rendered help when no one else would. And as Jesus was passing through Jericho, and since it was the Passover season, there were many other people traveling in the same direction on this road with him toward Jerusalem. There were his apostles many disciples and a large crowd of others who had seen his miracles and heard his teachings. Verse two tells us that in this crowd of people was also a man named Zacchaeus. And so let me tell you a few things about Zacchaeus. He was a man of unscrupulous character. Now Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was of short stature and he was also very rich. 
Zacchaeus had an occupation that allowed him to be the public robber by collecting taxes for the Roman government. He was a publican, which is a tax collector. Not only that, but Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector, and he believed in reaping where he hadn't sown. He didn't pray for it, didn't pay for it. He just took what he wanted. So whether they liked it or not, everything that Zacchaeus took from them, he stole it fair and square because he had the authority of the entire Roman government behind him to back up his action. Greek, his name meant pure or innocent. But Zacchaeus was anything but spotless and blameless. He was a bad man from a bad place with a bad profession. And the Jews bitterly hated him. Zacchaeus was a thief and a betrayer of his own people. And he had all the pleasures and comforts that money could buy. And because of how he lived, it's easy to see how his money was a threat to his salvation. But in spite of all of his flaws, verse 3 of our text says that Zacchaeus still had a zeal to see Christ. And this brings us to our first outline, which is seek Jesus. Zacchaeus' goal was to see Jesus. But the problem was that he had two obstacles in his way. The first obstacle was there was a crowd of people. And the next obstacle was that he was short in stature. Both of these kept him from seeing the Lord. Now that brings up a question for you today. That is, what's standing between you and the Lord? Is it the friends that you hang out with? Maybe it's your lifestyle. And I know maybe we have just too much business in our life. Or could it be something else entirely different? Individually, we're the only ones who can answer that question. But the fact of the matter is, we all have something that stands between us and God. Things that keep us from coming to him or doing all that he would have us to do. But we all have the determination like Zacchaeus. He wanted to fasten his eyes on Jesus so bad that he didn't let anything stand between him and the Lord. Zacchaeus was seeking Jesus. And so he just took off running ahead of the crowd. And you have to give Zacchaeus credit. He was always thinking ahead. Zacchaeus, he showed a desperation in trying to see Jesus. Despite his wealth and pleasure and comfort and joy by wealth, Zacchaeus was apparently empty and lonely within his heart. And we can say this because tax collectors were bitterly hated during those days. Zacchaeus was also small in stature and was suspected to have been self-conscious and had a low self-image. And the fact that he was little made it dangerous for him to be out in the midst of a crowd that despised him. And from all indications, he was denied passage through the crowd or he was thrust back. But that didn't stop him. His Desperate determination and persistence became even more evident. Zacchaeus was seeking Jesus. So he persevered in his attempt to see Jesus, even though he had to humble himself to do so. Verse 4 of our text tells us that Zacchaeus ran before the crowd and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see Jesus. Can you imagine that? Just imagine Zacchaeus, a man of his position and wealth, climbing a tree just to see a very important person pass by. He wanted to see Jesus so badly that he forgot about everything and everyone around him, humble himself and climb the tree. And Zacchaeus was determined to see the Lord. Nothing was going to stop him. His soul was stirred within and nothing was going to be sufficed until he saw the Lord. And he had heard about Jesus being the Messiah. And scholars even believe that he had even heard about Jesus calling Matthew, who was another tax collector, to be one of his apostles. And so it's obvious that Zacchaeus believed the report he had heard about Jesus and was determined to see him for himself. 
stirring of his soul deep within. It drove him to see Jesus. But it was an unusual sight. See a grown man of his position and power running down the road like a child. And not only that, but then climbing up a sycamore tree like a child. Zacchaeus showed his childlike faith in his actions because of his strong desire to want to see Christ. As we continue reading our text, we see that Zacchaeus' effort didn't go unnoticed. Because verse 5 of our text says, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And this leads us to our second outline, seen by Jesus. Seen by Jesus. Now let me ask you a question. Jesus invited himself to your house. Would you and your home be ready for his visit? Verse 5 says that Jesus looked up and saw Zacchaeus. Whether you know it or not, Jesus sees every man, no matter where he is. In the dark corners of shame, Jesus sees him. At the bottom of a harbor pit, Jesus sees him. Or even in the lowest parts of the valley, Jesus sees him. And not only that, but Jesus particularly sees the man who is seeking him in the sense of knowing about his need and then reaching out to meet that need. Jesus sees everything about a man. That was the case with Zacchaeus. He was desperate to see Jesus. And so he struggled against the odds and found a place where he could see Jesus. And even though the place where he chose exposed him to, to humiliation, but he didn't care. Zacchaeus was so willing to see Jesus that he was willing to climb a tree to do it. He was willing to do whatever it took to get a good look at the Savior. Because Zacchaeus sought so eagerly to see Jesus, he was what? He was seen by Jesus. When Jesus saw him, guess what? Jesus knew and called him by name. And that's because Jesus knows every man's name and he wants to call us by name, just like he did Zacchaeus. But we have to do like Zacchaeus did, which was to seek Jesus and get ourselves in a place where we can not only see Jesus, but where we can be seen by Jesus. And in return, Jesus will call us by name. Look at this. Now here you have Zacchaeus up in the sycamore tree, peeping down at Jesus. We have Jesus coming to the tree where Zacchaeus was looking up at him with a divine gaze. When you read this verse, it appears that it reads upside down. Because normally it's the sinner who's in the lower position looking up. The Lord is in the high position, high and elevated position, looking down. And there are several scriptures in the Bible that testify to this fact. For instance, Psalm 33, verse 13 says, The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. Then, verse, then Psalm 53, verse 2 tells us that God looketh down from heaven upon the children. Amen. And Isaiah chapter 63, verse 15, it lets us know that the Lord looks down from heaven and behold from his habitation of holiness and glory. Have you ever heard the saying, the Lord sits high, but he looks low? Well, this is a true statement. But when he looks low, he doesn't, it doesn't mean that he is just passively looking. It means he is actively involved in watching the activity of man. The fact of the matter is that our Lord looks down and from his vantage point, he sees each and every man. But when you read verse 5 of our text, it says that Jesus looked up, not down at Zacchaeus, and that it was Zacchaeus who looked down at Jesus. Now this appears to be upside down. Look at how this verse gives a picturesque view of man looking down on God, wickedness. Looking down on righteousness, humanity, looking down on 
deity. Mortality looking down on immortality. But even though this looks upside down to man, but to God, it's all right side up. Zacchaeus was actually at the right place at the right time, carrying out a plan that was preordained by the master before the foundation of the world to bring salvation to his house on that day. Zacchaeus looked down at Jesus and was seen by Jesus. Now keep in mind here that verse 1 of our text, it told us that Jesus had intended to just pass through Jericho. But now here he is in verse 5. He decides to stop when he sees Zacchaeus in a sycamore tree. And this lets us know that anyone who seeks Jesus with the desire to see him will in turn be seen by Jesus. Now as we continue reading verse 5 of our text, we see that after Jesus saw Zacchaeus, that he issued a divine order for the tax man to come down from the sycamore tree. And in that moment, Zacchaeus saw it all. He saw what his past had been, what his present was, and what his future could be. When Jesus saw Zacchaeus in the tree, he knew that he was seeking and needed him. And so he tells Zacchaeus, I must abide at your house today. And in verse 6 of our text, we see how Zacchaeus responds to Jesus' invitation. And this leads us to our third and final outline, which is receive Jesus. Third outline, receive Jesus. Verse 6 says, And he made haste, came down, and received him joyfully. We see here that Jesus asked to be received and to be received with haste. And he was set for Jerusalem and must not be delayed. There was no time to wait. And Jesus wanted to be welcomed and received by Zacchaeus. But Zacchaeus had to act right then and there. Jesus would only come into the house of Zacchaeus and into his life if he was received by Zacchaeus. And that's because Christ will not force himself into any man's house like an unwelcome intruder. He will only enter once his invitation to come into your life is accepted and received. And since Jesus had only a couple of hours before he had to move on to fulfill his purpose, moment of opportunity was right then and there. So the kids made haste and obeyed and received Jesus joyfully, so much so that his heart was already down, even before his feet hit the ground. Look at this. Jesus did not see Zacchaeus as a problem or a hindrance that interfered with his mission. But Jesus sees Zacchaeus as part of his earthly ministry, which was to seek and to save those who were lost. Just like Jesus called Zacchaeus to come down out of his sycamore tree. There are some who are in there's own sycamore trees today that the Lord is calling to come down from. For instance, there's the sycamore tree of pride. Lord is saying, come down from that tree. There's the sycamore tree of self-righteousness. The Lord is saying, come down. There's the sycamore tree of selfishness. You ought to come on down from that tree. There's the sycamore tree of Envy. The Lord is saying, make haste and come down from that tree. There's a sycamore tree of bitterness and hatred. And the Lord is saying, come down out of that tree. Then there's the sycamore tree of disobedience. And Jesus is saying, why don't you come down from that tree and obey my word? You see, the Lord is saying, come on down from all of the, those trees because they're not bearing fruit of the spirit. So why don't you, you know, you ought to, you need to come down. And if you're still struggling, trying to hang on to a branch on your tree, just do as Zacchaeus did and let go. Make haste and let go of every branch. The branch of pride, self-righteousness, selfishness, envy, bitterness, hatred, and disobedience. Let go of all those branches. Come on down. Because as long as you're holding on to a branch, guess what? You're still holding on to the tree. So what you need to do is let go 
and let go. Now, there was an urgency in Jesus' summer for Zacchaeus to come down. And Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem to fulfill his purpose for which he came into the world. And so Zacchaeus had to make haste and come down and receive Jesus. Zacchaeus climbed up the sycamore tree to see his blessing. But he had to come back down to the ground to receive him. And in receiving Jesus, spending time with him in his house, when you continue reading down to verses 7 through 10 in this chapter, you will see that because Jesus wanted to stay at Zacchaeus' house, there were many who complained that Jesus had gone to be the guest of a sin. And so Zacchaeus, he stood up and voluntarily announced that he would give half of what he owned to the poor and repay fourfold all he had wronged in his role of the chief tax collector. Zacchaeus publicly wanted the people know, to know that his time with Jesus had made a change in his life. Look at this. First, Zacchaeus was seeking Jesus. Now in his presence, he's now seeking repentance. After spending time with Jesus, Zacchaeus vows to turn his life around and to make restitution for his sins and to the people for his unscrupulous behavior as the chief tax collector. And he cheerfully offered to do even more than the law demanded. Interestingly, he parted with much of his wealth, similar to what Jesus had asked the rich young ruler to do in the previous chapter in Luke chapter 18. Verse 22, and Jesus told Zacchaeus that this day salvation has come to this house and since he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And Zacchaeus being a son of Abraham by birth now had a right to enter the kingdom of God because of his connection with Jesus Christ. That was Jesus' mission to seek and to save those who are lost. Now in close, Jesus called Zacchaeus down from his tree. Zacchaeus made haste and happily came down to receive Jesus. And because he received the Lord's invitation, salvation came to his house that day. And his model for salvation shows how the gift of salvation is available for everyone who first seek Jesus. Zacchaeus knew that what he was and what people thought about him. But in spite of that, he also knew that he wanted to see Jesus. So he climbed the sycamore tree. His interest to see Jesus led to something much deeper than just mere curiosity. Something seen by Jesus. While Zacchaeus saw Jesus, from the tree. He was seen by Jesus. And Jesus called him by name and then told him to make haste and come down. He then invited himself to the tax collector's house. Third, receive Jesus. Hearing the invitation from Jesus to abide in his house, Zacchaeus made haste, came down from the sycamore tree and received Jesus joyfully into his house. And his receiving Jesus into his house was an indication and sign of his receiving Jesus into his home. Now, though Zacchaeus initially sought Jesus, the truth of the matter is that it was Zacchaeus who was lost. Jesus came to save people just like Zacchaeus. Just know that Jesus sees you even before you seek him. He knows your name just like he knew Zacchaeus' name. And he invites himself into your home, your life, and your heart because he wants to be with you. And all who seek Jesus in reality are being sought, seen, and saved by him. So when Jesus extends an invitation and you hear his voice, harden out your heart. Don't put out for tomorrow what you should do today. Because accepting his invitation to come into your life leads to forgiveness of sins and eternal life with Jesus in heaven. A model for salvation. Thank you and may God bless you. Please bow with me in prayer. 
Eternal God, our Father, we thank you teaching us about salvation through this story about Zacchaeus, Luke chapter 19. Thank you for teaching us that if we seek you, you will see us. In fact, we realize that you sought us first, even before the foundation of the world. And Lord, I pray that anyone under the hear, anyone under the sound of my voice, anyone who hear you today, I pray, Lord, that they will accept you today. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. If you have a prayer request, like to invite the Lord into your life. Or if you have any comment, please send me a Facebook message or use the contact us option available on our website at pmbcfellowship.org. You can also contact me with your questions on today's message. To give your tithes, offering, and donation, please visit pmbcfellowship.org. Click the Give button on the top right of the page. Follow the instructions from there. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Thanks again for tuning in. And remember how Zacchaeus gave us a model for salvation by letting us know that we must seek Jesus to see him. And once we once we are seen by Jesus, we'll be willing to accept his invitation to come into your life. He will be willing to accept your invitation to come into your life. I mean, then what, the next thing we do is have to receive Jesus with joy and excitement as your personal Lord and Savior. Now I look forward to you viewing our live feed on next Sunday at 11 a.m. here at the pastor's desk or our live feed on YouTube at PNBC Space Fellowship or seeing you in person for Sunday morning worship on site. Providence Missionary Baptist Church, Monte Albert, Texas, being in accordance with the CDC guidelines. Until then, I want you to take care and may God bless you.